California landlords, the walls are closing in on you. Senate Bill 567 goes into effect in April of this year. If you're thinking about maybe moving back into your property, or maybe you're thinking about doing some major improvements to your property, think again because SB 567 makes it really tough for you to remove a tenant to move back into your property or to do major improvements to it. So. Uh, normally, I love the idea of rental property in California. Awesome, right? But I'd be remiss if I didn't let you know what you're getting into. So first, let's back up and talk a little bit about history. Um, back in May of 2023, uh, the San Diego Tenant Protection Ordinance went into effect. And what that did was it basically made a penalty for landlords who wanted to remove a tenant for no fault of the tenant. So for example, you wanted to move into your own place, you wanted to fix it up, not the tenant's fault, you want to do that. You could do it, but you needed to pay two to three months of rent penalty to that tenant to help them find their, their next place. That's a pretty big change, right? You can't just you know, end the tenancy. Um, it's gotten much worse. As of April of this year, um, tenants can be awarded actual damages. And those actual damages can be tripled for a willful violation. So uh, there's some definite penalties coming forward that we've never had up to this point. And the rules that establish a valid reason just got way more complex. Let's say you're charging $2,000 a month in rent and you decide that you're going to remove a tenant because you want to move into the place. However, um, when you do it, you don't do it. You willfully remove that tenant and it's found to be not lawful. Um, the tenant can sue for actual damages. They move into the next place, which is like your place, it's $500 more each month. So technically, you're spending $500 more each month times a year, it's $6,000 more each year. Well, if they claim that they should have been in your property for the next decade, and you move them out, that's $60,000 in damages. And if you did it willfully, are you liable for triple that damage, $180,000? That's a big deal. I'm not saying this is gonna happen, right? That sounds crazy. But with SB 567, you really have to think about What's going to happen going forward? And is that possible? And if so, how much of it? Now, if you are a landlord of a single family home, these don't apply to you. Now, there's a specific 10 word exemption sentence in the San Diego TPO. And I want to share it with you because it's just 10 words and it's really short and it's kind of weird. Here's what it, what it says. Um, if your property is alienable separate from the title of any other dwelling unit, that's it those are the 10 words, then these rules don't apply to you yet. And I say yet because single family homes don't appear to be part of this, um, uh, this set of rules that have just come out. But annually, there's a tidal wave annually of um, regulations, generally anti-landlord regulations that flow through the legislature and it's toss up as to which ones come out. So it didn't come out this year, but maybe next year, it's hard to really say, something to keep your eye on. If a new law came out, what might it look like? One way to figure it out is to take a look at the language of Senate Bill 567. Good to know. Um, and to see how intense things can get. In order for you to move into your building currently, just to move back in your building, you need to do these seven things. You ready? First, you must live at the property for at least 12 consecutive months after moving in. Second, it must be your primary residence. Third, you must not already live in another unit of the property. So no change in from a one bedroom to a two bedroom. Fourth, you must not have a similar vacant unit available at that time. Fifth, the tenant may request, may request proof that the person moving in is an owner or qualified relative. Sixth, you must include the name of the person moving in with the notice to terminate the vacancy. And seventh, you must move in within 90 days of the prior tenant moving out. That's pretty restrictive. <laughs> and you might be asking yourself, that's crazy. I got to try something different. And you could. You could instead decide to move your tenant out because you want to do some, imp some improvements. It's a pretty restrictive list there, but it's a shorter list. It only has four items on it. And here's what the four items are. It's one, the improvements must be substantial and require the tenant being out of the property continuously for 30 days or more. So no light paint, touch up, or carpet. It's got to be a big thing. Second, copies of the permits must be given to the tenants. That's right, the copies, not to the city necessarily, well, them also, but to the tenants, or a copy of the signed contract with the contractor. So now your tenant gets to review your permits and your contract with your contractor. Third, the tenant must also be provided notice of their option to reoccupy the unit after the, re after the remodeling's finished. 
And fourth, notice to terminate must be in specific language. So this is frightening language, but just as frightening um, is the rate at which the state can turn out harsh, unchallenged legislation that's anti-landlord going forward. If not this year, perhaps next year, your single family home may be the subject of one of these laws. Give a call to talk about your specific situation with your rental. And if you want some more information on what happened last year in May for the San Diego Tenant Pro Protection Act, uh, there's a video you can link to here. And I am sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I'd much rather you understand this now before hang on long term to a property than to figure it out later. So let's talk some more and enjoy the rest of your week.